Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and Happy New Year, Willie here. As many of you will know by this point, the characters we're playing on in Classic World of Warcraft are far more powerful than what would have been available back in the day. This is due to Blizzard's decision to release Classic on a version of Patch 1.12, and by Patch 1.12, classes were more fleshed out, complete, and sort of made a bit more sense across the board. This is one of the big reasons the Molten Core has been such a big rollover. A previous character at level 60 now almost feels like a twink in comparison to the players of old. In fact, Blackwing Lair is likely to be much of the same deal. We'll have to experience it ourselves eventually once we get it though. So this got me thinking, what exactly have we missed out on? What would have a progressive talent system given us to look forwards to throughout the duration of Classic? Have you ever wondered what was different about your class and how it would have played prior to patch 1.12? No? Well, me neither to be honest, until I got curious and I started looking back into how classes were and wow, I can't believe how different some things are. And the more I looked at it, the more I'm surprised this hasn't been covered in more detail as I found it super interesting personally. So today let's take a look over a few changes that have taken place for each class, whether it's modifications to abilities, new abilities entirely, or abilities being deleted, getting to where we are at now has already very much been its own journey. Druid talents have swapped around a bit more significantly than with other classes. The changes the shapeshifting talent had pre 1.12 were way more interesting. It reads reduces the delay before using spells and abilities by 0.5 seconds after having shapeshifted. What this basically means is there is no global cooldown after having shapeshifted. Today instead we have the natural shapeshifting talent instead which is the 10% reduction to the mana cost of shapeshifting and has 3 ranks. In earlier versions of the game this used to be called swift shifting instead and also had 3 points to invest in it. Now for druids at present you can already eliminate the GCD after having shifted by using power shifting so cancelling the form via a macro and then repressing the form again. But this is concerning coming out of shapeshift this talent is concerning going into it. This means you'll be able to act instantly after having entered a shapeshift. The options this open up are pretty cool to be honest. Instant bash from bear form, you get an instant shred upon entering cat form, so power shifting would be even better with this talent in mind. Is it better than a 30% reduction to the mana cost of shifts? Uh, despite it not being exciting, probably not no. Some of the spells that need priority are already off GCD when entering shifts like dash, fell, charge or growl. So you can kind of see where this talent was done away with. Next up for druids I want to look over to the restoration tree to a very powerful talent that was made baseline ability for all druids to enjoy and that is innovate. So prior to 1.12 innovate used to be the final talent in the restoration tree. It worked exactly the same as Innovate does today. A 6 minute cooldown increases mana regen by 400% and allows 100% of the target's mana to continue regenerating during combat. In today's version of the game we have Swift Mend instead, an ability that consumes a heal over time effect for a big instant heal. This does make sense considering that Druids are the only healer class to not have a cast reduction talent for their big main heal, Healing Touch, so naturally more priority healing is certainly welcome. And the fact that any druid can gain the benefit of innovate, I would say that druids are likely better overall for these changes. Hunter. Hunter talents are also pretty wild in terms of changes that have been made. In fact, one area of the hunter's talent tree was pretty severely rebuilt from the ground up. First of all, I want to look over the beast mastery tree, especially at the last talent in that tree, which pre 1.12 was spirit bond. Now, for you hunters out there, you might be thinking spirit bond still exists though, right? Right, yeah it does, you're right. The modern version of Spirit Bond is a 2 rank talent which heals you and your pet for 2% of their total health every 10 seconds. The old Spirit Bond was the level 40 talent for Beast Mastery Hunters and was later replaced by Bestial Wrath, which is the spell we all know which makes your pet go big, red and very angry. Old Spirit Bond was a bit more interesting than the new one however. It was a spell that you had to cast and made it so each time your pet dealt damage, the hunter would be healed for 40. So with the fastest attacking pet possible, like Broken Tooth, who attacks once per second, that would mean at the top end, assuming Frenzy is always active, your pet would attack 78 times per minute, healing the hunter 3120 health over a minute. Uh, I doubt this scaled off anything, I couldn't find whether it could actually crit as well, but even baseline, this is pretty solid to be honest. Cases where it would heal this much or the hunter would actually need this much healing, I can't think of one off the top of my head, but it's still pretty fun to think about at a min-max value. 
Okay, now let's get weird and look over to the survival tree. Pre 1.12, it was really dedicated to melee entirely. The version we have today has been streamlined into a more utility slash trap dedicated tree overall. Back then we had talents like Precision, which is the exact same talent that rogues have to improve their hit chance, improved Raptor Strike, extra melee damage and crit. Blizzard really wanted you to just forget that bow on your back exists and get stuck in there in melee range. This whole talent tree is kind of a highlight to be honest, but I do want to mention the final talent in the tree in particular, which is Lacerate. This is basically the same as Rend that warriors get, but at the end of a talent tree, it's not exactly much to get excited about to be honest. And a fun fact, Blizzard have actually changed survival back into a melee specialization on retail, and even had Lacerate back in its rotation for a period of time. Survival is still going in BFA as a melee class, but Lacerate has once again bitten the dust, maybe for the last time this time. It's things like this that make me feel somewhat that progressive talents may have been fun, if only for the meme value. Majors were one of the classes throughout this who had the least number of changes. Not to say they certainly didn't have any changes, but just not to the scale that certain other classes did. The improved ward talents actually used to be quite a bit more powerful than they are today. In fact, improved ward talents are really never used at present. Perhaps the old versions would have been. Just as a refresher, the current improved wards are two point talents and give you a 20% chance to reflect spells from their respective schools, those being fire or frost, whilst active. The old fire ward would reflect 35% of all fire damage incoming whilst it was active, making it both solid on the offense as well as defense. A rank 5 fire ward absorbs 920 damage and mages have pretty low health values in general so gaining about 1000 health that your opponent has to spend mana to go through sounds pretty good to me. The frost ward talent could have one point put into it and gave you a 50% mana reduction on any of the frost damage you take whilst it's active so it's pretty easy returns on your mana investment here too in addition to giving you a mana advantage in duels which can often help out a nice amount too. Perhaps these old ward bonuses would have made them a more interesting choice to put talents into than they are nowadays. Perhaps one of the biggest changes for mages between the old and the new talent trees is what happened to Arcane Explosion. In the modern version of the talent tree, improved Arcane Explosion has replaced the old one and it now gives an extra 6% chance to crit for free talent points invested. The old talent in this one's place though was a 5 point talent that overall reduced the cast time of Arcane Explosion from 1.5 seconds to 0. Yep, that's right, Arcane Explosion used to have a cast time by default. This spell becoming instant on top of the likes of Flame Strike, Frost Nova and Cone of Cold made mages already very strong on AoE into undeniably the best. Of course this talent was done away with as well as making Arcane Explosion instant by default at a later phase. Just imagine being forced to put points into Arcane in order to get an instant Arcane Explosion. And by the way you may have noticed that Evocation is also part of the Arcane Tree. Arcane is definitely still a support oriented tree to complement frost and fire, but back before 1.12 it was even more so. The old version of Paladin talents actually still look pretty good in comparison to the modern version that we're currently running with. The largest thing you can notice is just how many different talents have been swapped around into different trees. Holy as Sanctity Aura, Protection as Repentance, and Retribution has Kings and Consecration. I actually prefer this talent setup to what we have at the moment. If Retribution did have Kings, it would make them a valuable asset to any group regardless of how much damage they actually do, since Kings is such a substantial buff. Two of the talents that are quite interesting in how they have been changed are first of all Seal of Fury, which may sound like nothing you've ever heard of, and well, that's for a good reason, because it was removed prior to patch 1.12. This spell used to increase the Paladin's auto attack damage threat generated, and the Judgment version would increase the threat from all wholly damaging spells against the target. Sounds pretty decent, especially when the Paladin's auto attacks were stronger in terms of generating threat, they would have been better overall on single target, which is their main weakness. However, as a trade-off, their AoE threat would have been non-existent basically, since you actually have to judge a target to get the holy damage increase on them, which can only be done every 10 seconds or so. This was later replaced by Righteous Fury, which just straight up increases threat from all holy damage, which can be increased once again via talents. This spell is really what gives Paladins their dungeon niche. They are and always were not really functional in raids due to their lack of taunt. The second talent I want to highlight for Paladins is how that old version of Seal of Command worked, especially when combined with an improved Seal of Justice. The old Seal of Command would have 100% weapon damage on Holy as a proc, which is 30% better than what we have at the moment. The Judgment caused the target to take extra damage whenever they are stunned. Seal of Justice, when talented, gave it a much more frequent chance to proc the mini stun it does. It probably would have capped out 
pretty fast in terms of stuns, but it would have made Paladins that little bit more interesting in PvP, and it would have allowed them to pick up Reckoning very easy as well. I would be very interested to see how this one would have played. Priest now, Shadow is really one of the specialisations that has had the least changes overall across any class. Holy and Discipline, however, have had quite a few things mixed around in them both. Let's look over to Discipline first. It has undergone changes for the best, I would say. The level 40 talent for Discipline used to be Divine Spirit, which of course has now been replaced by Power Infusion. Something that was missing from the Holy Tree was Spiritual Focus talent, which gave you a 70% chance to ignore knockbacks with two points invested. Instead, you have Martyrdom. This still exists, which is good, no doubt but not good if you aren't being actively targeted. For this end, Priest could have activated Focus Casting as an effect for every 8 seconds, every 1 minute, giving them some leeway on their casting. Honestly, both of these have merits, and I could see how each one could be argued, though it is kind of hard to argue a passive that is reasonably close to the power level of an active. There isn't really too much to remark in terms of different. Priests were largely made well, and up to this day are still topping charts, so let's move on for now. Quite like priests, rogues are also well built. If anything, the changes they have overgone have largely combined certain talents together, making them even more powerful. The cooldown reducing effects from improved sprint and evasion were combined together into one. Rapid concealment and camouflage were both added together into the camouflage talent. Rogues also gained weapon expertise in the combat tree to replace the pretty much useless throwing weapon specialisation, which is a pretty good trade-off I'd say. The murder talent used to give extra hit on some of your stealthed abilities too, meaning a rogue, just as they are today, really don't have to gear too heavily into hit in order to get capped. Overall, nothing too dramatic here, so let's go straight on to our next class, which is the Shaman. Shaman changes in talents are largely based around actually bringing totems into the same talent slots, so you didn't have to spend dozens of talent points to upgrade all your various totems. This pretty much happened across the board for all specialisations. Elemental combined four different talents into two. Enhancement combined six talents into two. Restoration combined two talents into one. Overall, before 1.12, you had to spend talent points to boost each totem individually, which on one hand could have led to Shaman's roles in group being more specialised. On the other hand, you're having to sink a huge number of talents and not really getting all that much for yourself, which some people will like, of course, but then again, there's always solo play and you do want your choices to make yourself better as well as your group in the long run. Other than that, not a huge number of changes to be found across the board for the Shaman. The role of providing buffs, being a large focus, being combined together so that Shaman players were able to focus more points into improving their own performance through whatever talent tree they may choose. Warlock, another one with very few changes overall on the talent side and when I say very few I mean very few there are only a couple talents that are changed in a small way or one or two talents that have minor uses that were done away with many of the larger changes for warlocks ended up being to their abilities instead Death Core used to be far worse than what we have today. It was once a 10 minute cooldown that healed for 100% of the damage that it dealt and still had the short 3 second horror effect that it has today. It was changed to a 2 minute cooldown and healed for 300% of the damage that it did at a later phase. This is kind of an I win button in certain matchups and having it or not is one of Warlock's strongest crutches in 1v1s and one of the most class defining abilities. To be honest, even on a 10 minute cooldown it would still have been pretty good as a recovery tool. That's how powerful Powerful as spell is. A talent that did not exist pre 1.12 was Master Demonologist. Evidently, the demonology tree didn't really give enough benefits for having a demon out, as opposed to having to spend so many points only to sacrifice your demon at the end of it. So, this new talent was brought about to make it a bit more worthwhile. This gives a variety of different benefits depending on your demon and makes you that little bit stronger in smaller fights. Warriors are another one that bear a strong resemblance to the M product that we're playing with today. Many of their changes they have undergone have just been bug fixes to make the class play a bit better or just make a little bit more sense overall, like not being able to change weapon to cancel disarms or sweeping strikes proccing from corpses for some reason. Hummel was actually taken out close to release, so if a warrior wanted to interrupt it had to be with shield bash, which is already one more interrupt than many other classes had. However, it was later reintroduced back into 1.2, which I understand the GCD of Swan swapping back and forth in order to interrupt is kind of clunky and predictable. Bloodthirst underwent a pretty massive change which really led to a new function for the spell. Pre 1.6 it used to be your next attack after landing a killing blow would deal 100% extra damage. This actually sounds pretty good for leveling, being able to constantly go from mob to mob with that big damage buff, as well as in certain PvE scenarios where you can cheese resets to benefit your single target damage perhaps. However of course this benefits two handers way more than one handers since they just have more damage on them and it was 
it's changed in 1.6 to be an active ability that does damage based on your attack power, which we're still playing with today. Other than that, few changes to the warrior in terms of anything massive, it has always been a staple and will continue to be so. And that rounds up my brief look at some class changes pre 1.12. Some are just a bunch of bug fixes and minor tweaks, others have had enormous changes that could have fundamentally changed the way the class is played today. After hearing these, would have you liked a progressive talent system or are you happy with having a more stable class overall? I personally think it would have been interesting for certain classes and others would have just got a bunch of bug fixes and nothing really substantial. So overall, I do think 1.12 is for the best, and I understand why Blizzard chose it. I do hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think, and as always, I will see you in the next one. If you like what you see, give the video a like and subscribe as there's plenty more to come. As always, thank you all so much for watching. Take care. Bye.